Have you ever posted a question in a car audio group on Facebook or Reddit and are immediately inundated with conflicting information? Um, I know that this has happened to me a lot and it seems to be especially prevalent in the car audio community. You ask a question, four different people answer, none of the answers are the same, none of them provide a reference. They all say, I, trust me, I've been an installer for 10 years. Uh, but they all say that, so it, it can be difficult to sort through the, the mountains of bullshit that you'll receive anytime you ask any question about car audio. Um, there's a lot of people that are naive on the subject and think they know and just don't. And one of the most common questions that I see get answers all over the place is, can I run a standard lead acid battery with a lithium battery with no isolator in between? First off, you can run whatever you would like. Whether it's good for the batteries or not, that's to be determined. But in this situation, the, the primary argument against running a lithium battery with a lead acid battery is that this rests at a lower voltage. About 12.6 volts is the nominal voltage of this lead acid battery, whereas this is the nominal voltage 12.8 and actually rests at about 13.3. So what the argument against running these two battery types together is, is that basically this battery is going to pull this battery down because this is going to be trying to charge this battery up the entire time as long as the voltage is higher. Eventually we'll end up with two batteries that have a resting voltage of the lead acid, which is not healthy for the lithium. Um, so what we are going to do today is I'm going to hook up both of these batteries in parallel. This is a brand new battery from Walmart. Haven't hooked it up yet. Haven't done anything with it. Um, just went and picked it up today. You can see the manufacturer date is January of 2023. And basically we're going to charge them up to 14.4 volts in parallel, and I'm going to have a shunt in between them. This will allow us to monitor the current flowing from either way once the charger is turned off. That's what we'll be looking for. Um, once we turn the charger off, how fast does this battery draw current? Is it a lot? Is it going to basically trickle charge it and float charge the lead acid battery, which actually wouldn't be bad for this battery? or is nothing going to happen at all? Um, that's what we're going to find out today. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up to test. What I'm doing is I'm running the, the ground directly to the shunt. And then get this connection tighter. I'm going to go ahead and get the negative of my charger hooked up. so I can charge it a bit quicker. I'm going to hook up the second charger as well. No, man down. No. I can use that charger today. Okay, so get these tightened down. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the positive terminals of these batteries. Now, I'm not using very large wire because I don't imagine that we're actually going to see much current. Um, if it burns, it burns, I suppose. I'd be very surprised, but I just don't think we're going to see that much with the amount of voltage difference that we have. Okay, so now I'm going to... the other battery terminal.
Okay. And then finally, we just have to hook up the last ground. the other side of this shunt here. Okay, so now we have both of these batteries hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the charger. Let me set this for 14.4. Okay, so now we're charging, but we want to be able to see this, so we're going to use this monitor so we can see exactly what's happening in real time. Um, the voltage that I'm going to be monitoring is at the positive terminal of the lithium battery. working okay so now on this voltmeter you can see um, we're charging at it looks like about 4.1 amp hours are flowing through the shunt um, this is actually charging at it says 5 amps so it looks like the lead acid battery is taking about an amp and the other four amps are going to the lithium battery and let's check the this says and this says 13.3, so we are matched up from here to here. And this is the Glow Voltage Series 1. So it's the GVS1 battery, in case you were wondering. This is 90 amp hours. And so now, uh, we just need to hang out for a bit and wait until we get up to 14.4 volts. Once we're at 14.4, um, I will come back. I will turn off the charger and we will see what happens to the current as it slowly you know, drops down to its resting voltage. We'll, we'll see how many amps and check it out. All right, so I will be back as soon as this is done charging to 14.4 and we'll do the test. All right, everyone, I am back. We are sitting at mid 14 as you can see here. I have a multimeter hooked up to this one since this is the voltage of the actual glow battery. Um, but I'm about to disconnect the charger and we will monitor the current. You can see here it's currently at 90 amp hour, so it's a full state of charge. Um, okay, I'm gonna disconnect the chargers now and we'll see what happens. Okay, so right now it looks like it is draining very slowly, 0.7 amps. Um, so not very much at all. Um, the voltage is dropping those, you can see. I'm going to, I do have it logging now, so we'll be able to monitor this curve and see everything that happens from this point forward. So I will leave this sit for about an hour and I will come back and we will check it then.
Okay, so I'm back and it has been about an hour. Um, if you look there, you can see an hour and six minutes since we stopped the charging. That's when I reset the timer. Um, I need to turn my multimeter back on so we can get a comparison. Okay, it looks like the lead acid battery is actually reading a little bit higher, but I have noticed that this is about 0 0.2 off of this. So that makes pretty good sense. But if you look, we're down to only 0 0.3 amps of current going between these two batteries with the car off. Um, in an hour, we have lost less than a half of an amp hour. I know a lot of vehicles have more parasitic draw than that even, so... Um, thus far it's been neg negligible and to drop this battery down substantially would I, I mean we're talking like five days seven days um, but I will check back in another couple of hours just to see how it's going and after that I will get it all graphed up all right guys it has now been a little over four hours and we are down to 0 0.07 amps of current. Almost nothing. Okay, everyone, this is going to be the last update at five hours in. Um, we're not getting any discernible current from the monitor. Every once in a while, it jumps up to 0.1, but then it immediately falls back down to 0 0.0, and it's been sitting at 13.3 volts. Um, if we look over here at the clamp meter, it's 0 0.026 amps. So every 40 hours, it would draw one amp of current at this rate, but it's been getting progressively slower. So, um, it is what it is. There's the information. What happens if you leave your lead acid and lithium hooked up together unisolated? So after doing these tests, I'm, I'm not convinced. I don't think that having them hooked up with a standard lead acid battery is really going to hurt the lithium battery. Um, you know, we're down to under a tenth of an amp an hour. That's, I mean, just an extraordinary long amount of time to draw any real current from it um, and drop the voltage. To me, it seems more like what's occurring is the the lithium battery is kind of trickle charging the lead acid battery lead acid batteries can hold that voltage pretty well so with just a very small amount of current from the lithium battery the, the lead acid is floating at the lithium's level as opposed to the lithium getting pulled down um again we haven't done this long term so i am going to leave this run overnight if there's any major changes in the morning i'll update this video but i am I'm pretty much expecting to upload this and put a fork in at least my belief that hooking up a lithium with a lead acid battery is going to have um, any kind of effects of consequence really in the long run. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, uh, last update for real this time. It looks like, um, about two days later, and I'm still at about 3.28 to 3.29, uh, still shown as 89 amp hours left. So I don't know. There it is.